So someone once said that investing is like it's like love. So sometimes there are ups, there are downs, but the best way to write through love is to have a good understanding of you and your partner and expectations. Hi everyone, welcome to IFAS Research Podcast. Today we have a rather interesting investing topic, something that uh, definitely deserves more attention, and that is the fixed income market. So here with me today, we have Jamie, Client Portfolio Manager at eSpring Investments, and we also have Cyrus, who is from our very own research team. Right, so we will mainly be discussing the mid-year outlook for fixed income, but before we delve into that, let's start with something maybe more basic first. So my first question is, you know, generally, um, when people think of investing, right, they are more likely to be thinking of stocks or ETFs rather than bonds because, you know, I mean, those are more commonly known. La. So why bonds when there's exciting stocks like, you know, say AI or semicon? That's a good question. So someone once said that investing is like, it's like love. So sometimes there are ups, there are downs, but the best way to write through love is to have a good understanding of you and your partner and expectations. So for bonds, there's expectation that they'll be more stable compared to stocks and the risk and returns will be therefore commensurate. You could have a very exciting love life, right? Like every day you go skydiving, every day you go and sit roller coaster, and everything's so exciting. But there could also be the crashes because you, you, you might well die from skydiving. So you could go into AI, that's always possible, a small allocation of portfolio. But in general, we'd advocate that for a proper investor with a longer term investment horizon, to always have some amount of the portfolios in bonds, which are more stable and are in general not so correlated to stocks. Right, okay. Then for you, Cyrus, do you have an exciting love life? No, uh, unfortunately, my love life is not that exciting. No personal experience. But I think I agree. La. So sometimes your love life can be very exciting. But I think for some people, what they want is really some stability. Like love, love. I think most people's love life is not like every day, you know, going to new places every day. Sometimes it's about the boring, but the important parts as well. And I guess for stocks and bonds, it's the same thing, right? Depending on your investment objectives and all that. Sometimes the allocation to bonds is, you know, very important just for that stability. So yeah, overall, I mean, if you are looking at AI semicons, very interesting, very hot, but it's it depends on what you're looking for. And I think bonds definitely has a place in your portfolio, no matter how big or no matter how small. Right, okay. I think a uh, very good conclusion to the question <laughs> that we have asked. Right, so now we will go into, you know, more of the overview of the fixed income market's performance, especially in the first half of the year. Um, how did the different sectors perform relative to each other? So the beginning of the year started with um, many people expecting, let's say, six to seven Fed cuts. And right now, we're seeing maybe one, maybe two, maybe none. So everyone's view is a little bit more dispersed right now. So what happened at the beginning of the year was that people were more optimistic that the Fed would cut and therefore the expectations for bonds were a lot higher. Unfortunately, this has not played out as the inflation in the US has been con has remained consistently strong. And so the Fed has decided to be very, very data-driven as they have been for many, many months and, and many, many years. And especially now, they're really looking at every single month, uh, every single data point and to come to the decision of when should we cut. The cut next cuts coming up are potentially in September, November, December. We all know that November is election month. So that's uh, a little bit more tricky if they decide to cut. So we're left with September and December. And right now, the odds tend look more to be the end of the year compared to now. And overall, the bond markets have not been so on fire compared to equities and partly because of this uncertainty from the Fed. Right. Okay, Cyrus, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, they've not been, you know, in your words, on fire like the equities. But I think I just want to highlight that I think most bond markets have actually done, you know, still positive performance. Of course, there's a bit of dispersion. Your Some of your high yield, shorter duration segments have perhaps done better than your longer duration. But overall, if you look at uh, a lot of our key bond markets that we cover within the research team, you're still looking at positive performances. And this is really helped by, you know, yields are looking much more attractive nowadays and this has really supported performance even though you know the interest rate backdrop maybe hasn't played out as what uh, markets were thinking at the start of the year. I think what's also very important for bonds is not just the capital appreciation. So capital appreciation is a very equities mentality. For bonds, what we like is to be able to clip coupons and therefore the quality of a bond is very important. There are higher qu credit quality ones, what we call investment grade, and then there are lower quality ones, what we call high yield. If you go for the higher quality ones, these are the ones where, if assuming that there are no defaults and that these bonds really do pay at maturity, you can clip coupons. 
So, so back to this love life example, every day you want to be able to tend to your garden and every day you will not suddenly see like 10 pumpkins one day, right? Every day you water a bit, you might get a, a bean, you might get one tomato, one potato and you always want to always clip coupons to always farm a little bit of your garden. And, and this is what we like compared to the uh, volatility of, let's say, going to, let's say, casinos, where there's a very big high wind, but you might also get, very well get nothing for a very long time or ever. Um, we have very briefly covered, uh, you know, what happened over the past six months. Also, some of your thoughts on uh, the bond market. Um, but now, maybe let's look forward. Uh, what are your expectations for the fixed income market in the second half of the year? We expect the fixed income markets to continue to be fairly flat. Uh, and of course, this is in the backdrop of volatile markets. Uh, geopolitics tend to continue to be very strong. Uh, Ukraine, Russia, Gaza Strip and the latest incidents of uh, US presidential candidates potentially being in life-endangering situations. This could all be very uh, confusing and concerning for markets. So between bonds and equities, this could be better for bonds. But nonetheless, it would still be no sure win in that sense. Right, okay. Cyrus, anything to add on? Yeah, absolutely. I think rates for, for our expectation moving ahead, our house view is for zero cuts. So we expect rates to remain um, fa- fairly stable, I think fairly well anchored. But overall, this I think this will translate to a pretty good performance for bonds. Once again, as, as, as Jamie mentioned, you know, if there are so many uncertainties out there, sometimes what investors need in their portfolio is that that bull up, you know, that the anchor that they need in their portfolio to provide some stability. And considering once again, you know, yields are looking good. If rates are going to stay stable, I think overall, um, we we are we think that bonds look pretty good at the moment. Right. Okay. You you mentioned you know what investors need in their portfolio yeah. at this point in time. How do you guys uh you know advise investors on how they position their fixed income portfolios for the rest of the year? Right now, our preference is definitely for investment grade. For those who have a stomach for tolerance for high yield, we will not say no because there's always room for the whole spectrum of investments from the safer to the uh, higher risk ones, for example, high yield bonds, equities. There's definitely room for high yield bonds. But overall, if you're a fairly new investor or if you feel like you cannot take so much risk, we would advise investment grade. And right now, uh, Asia investment grade, the yields are almost hitting 6%. It's 5.5, roughly 6%. And this is a very high level. If you think about, let's say, even 5 Five, six years ago, to reach 5% is kind of like, like a dream. It's so difficult to get there unless you have very sizable high yield. These days, close to eyes, Asia investment grade, solidly 5.5%. So this is what we like. If you, in your minds, you have some number you want to hit. For example, everyone has this dream number they want to hit. I want to get X percent in my salary increment every year, right? So if this dream number can come via these bonds, which are solidly investment grade, why not? Yeah, so for us, I think in, for the bond market, what we are looking for is two things. So first is short duration. So generally, we like shorter duration bonds because, you know, it's with our view on US inflation remaining sticky, it's likely that uh, we won't see a lot of rate cuts, if any. So our view, once again, is zero cuts. So based on that backdrop and considering the inverted yield curve, I think currently the risk reward is tilted towards shorter duration bonds at the moment. So that's one. So the second thing is on higher quality bonds. So this is similar to what Jamie has said on investment grade. So I think if you look at uh, valuations right now, um, I think investment uh, Asia Asia investment grade, global investment grade, relative to their high yield counterparts, generally valuations look much better for the IG versus high yield at the moment. Once again, this is on a risk reward basis. I think we have to consider that there's still, even though the macro backdrop right now, still quite solid, but there's a lot of uncertainties out there. Um, you know, Jamie has mentioned some of them on the geopolitical front, and including uh, some aspects on the geopolitical front. So I think with all this risk reward in mind, I think high quality investment grade bonds are definitely the way to go, especially as you know, you close one eye can get 5.5, 6% you. I think it's a pretty good return for something that's, you know, fairly safe. Mm, East Spring Investments, we recently issued a thought leadership paper on Asia investment grade bonds. And in there, we, we looked at if your bond yields are at 5%, so if Asia investment grade bond yields are at 5%, how much returns will you get for the next 12 months forward? So we realised that for the in 86% of the time, you will get positive returns. So the risk reward is definitely skewed in investors' favours today. If there's any bond fund recommendation for our investors. I like how Cyrus mentioned uh, definitely high quality and low duration. So something that uh, 
many professional investors have to grapple with is the inverted yield curve, where the front end of the bond curve is very high compared to the longer end. And therefore, now is a good time to take opportunity of the front end and you would want to go for a bond fund which would be lower duration. For example, we have the IFAS East Spring Lion Bond Fund, where duration is not even two, two years, it is 1.8 years. And it is a very, very high quality to a tune of every single bond in there must be at least A-. minus. So, so a little bit of a bond background is that the highest rating is triple A, double A, single A, triple B. Then there's a cutoff and that's high yield. So now it is at every single bond must be A-. minus. Every single bond, not the average portfolio, but every single bond. And so this gives our investors in this fund a lot of comfort that every bond in there is high credit quality, meaning not so likely because we can never, never guarantee, but highly likely not to default. And with short duration, it fits exactly into Cyrus's recommendation. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the short duration side from our research team's point of view, I think it's quite clear. Lah. So as you mentioned, it's about, it's under two years, it's about 1.7 is something, 1.8 years duration for the fund. And I think that's much lower than um, uh, a lot of the other bond funds out there. I think currently, if you're looking at Asia or global, you're looking at, let's say three or four plus years generally speaking, la, just from uh, what I'm seeing. So one plus year versus a lot of other funds, which are, let's say, three, four years or so. Duration, definitely short. And in terms of higher quality, I think uh, it's definitely something that I, I think this actually distinguishes the Lion Bond Fund. So I think if you look at age, IG bond funds, investment grade bond funds in general, there are a few types. There are some that will, uh, their mandate is that they will keep the average at triple B minus, uh, at least triple B minus and above. They will keep the average at investment grade. So sometimes they will invest in some investment grade, a bit of junk bonds or high yield bonds. So that's one type. The second type is that uh, of funds, they will each credit, each bond they will invest is triple B minus above, must be investment grade. But I think the Lion Bond Fund stands out because you have a higher threshold than triple B minus. Each one is A minus and above. And it, uh, I'll say it's quite unique among different funds. If I think if an investor looking to, I'll say sleep easier at night with something, uh, a portfolio that's safer, it's uh, definitely um, something to, to, to consider. Uh. Um, so that's on the duration and credit quality. But at the end of the day, I think um, for me, for funds, the proof is in the pudding. So it's on the fund manager's skill to pick the correct bonds to you know select the best credits. And how do you tell if a fund manager is good? It's through their track record. So for this East Spring Lion Bond Fund, they recently won an award in 2023 by an organization called Benchmark. So this Benchmark Fund Awards was, was for the top uh, fixed income funds uh, within Asia. And uh, yeah, so overall, I think to win the award, I think they were in the top 1% of funds uh, in that category. And it really shows because if you look at their, you know, their track record, their performance has been very solid over the years. And what stands out once again is the risk metrics. If you look at uh, how much the fund has uh, done in terms of its downside risk management, as well as overall risk management, it's, I'll say, best in class in our opinion. Uh. And, you know, it really comes back to what they say they'll do and what actually happens. So what they what they've said they'll do is that they'll maintain a high quality portfolio. Each one is A minus and above, and it really reflects in their overall uh, risk risk management uh, metrics. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Cyrus, for sharing that. I'll be a little bit shy to share that myself. <laughs> and yeah. and indeed, uh, what is important for this award it is it is not open for self nomination and is very very. Uh, objectively and quantifiably uh, selected. It is based on one and three year returns, Sortino ratio, as well as ESG score considerations. And so this, this is um, something that we're, that we're very pleased and this is indeed testimony, proof in the pudding of our very solid, rigorous investment process, our large and experienced investment team, as well as our comprehensive risk management measures. The intention of this award is that it must have tangible, medium and long-term outcomes without compromising investors. So this is very important because I too like to sleep well at night, right? You know, I, I think many people's day jobs in Singapore and Malaysia or, or around the region, it's so stressful. I don't want to invest in something and be consistently wondering and, and fearing like a roller coaster. Oh, did I buy the right thing? I want something that I can really close to eye, sleep well at night, knowing that it's in good hands. Right, okay. Wow, sounds sounds pretty good. But other than that, you know, um, before we end off the podcast, any last piece of advice about bonds investing that you guys would like to give to our investors um, yeah, who are listening? Something that has not been touched on yet is reinvestment risk 
where I know many people, especially the, the more retail investors, they would like to go into the six month or even the one year T-bills, which are right now yielding something like 3.7%, which is admittedly very attractive. So something we like to caution investors is that you will highly likely not be able to get that amount six months later, because we do see that inflation is coming off globally. And the US, Singapore inflation would also likely be falling and therefore you will not get that amount. Therefore, now is a great time to go into a slightly longer duration bond fund. For example, the IFAS East Spring Lion Bond Fund, which is roughly two years in duration and lock in the yields at this level. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. Though. So I think overall, my, my takeaway for audience is that investment is not just a six month journey. It's a long term journey it's for whatever your investment uh, objectives are. So for example, it could be for retirement, for instance, which for me is quite a number of years away. But I think it's a long-term investment journey. So we investors should not just look at, oh, what will happen in the next six months. They should look at what will happen in the next one, two, three, five, ten years, or, or depending on what, what they want. And for that, I think uh, a diversified portfolio uh, is definitely the way to go. And as part of the diversified portfolio, you will need some safer parts of the portfolio. And this IFAS East Spring Lion Bond Fund could potentially be a pretty good choice once again, if you want to sleep well at night. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, the both of you, for joining us today on this podcast. And uh, really, you know, very good insights shared today. Thank you so much. Um, to our viewers, if you would like to find out more about IFAS East Spring Lion Bond Fund, as I've mentioned earlier, we will link it in the video description. Right. So uh, we'll end it here today. Thank you so much to the both of you once again for taking the time to join me here. 